Hello Internet, so nice to see you today. I have a great question and I want to answer for you. Thanks for this. I have a question for you, but I don't know the words in English, so I'll make it in Spanish. Con conors con or co for No. Conozco cuatro tipos de escalas menores que son las siguientes iguala, antigua, armónica, melódica y bachiana. That's better. Four are different and I don't know what they mean in English, but I get confused sometimes with the different points of view in music theory and what is true. So there's a lot of confusion between the minor scales. So let's clarify this confusion. Let's see what are those minor scales, how do you use them, and all that. Okay? I'm going to do everything in A minor, okay? Because it's easier to see in A minor. Why? Because if I take the A minor natural scale, the scale is the easiest thing ever because it's just the alphabet. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm going to write it down. So natural minor, natural minor, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Nothing strange about that, okay? And this sounds like the way you expect, okay? It's, an a, it's a minor scale. It sounds this way. Everybody agrees is that this is a natural minor scale. And what everybody agrees too is that there is a harmonic minor scale. And the harmonic minor scale works this way. It's, I'm going to call it harmonic, H, H, A, R, and the notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp. Okay? Only one note of difference, okay? And by the way, if you know all these already, no problem, because when I get to the Bach scale, you're gonna see the difference between what you normally do. That's the harmonic minor scale. We can play sequentially, like we do for the um, natural minor. Okay? And again, the only thing is I play A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp. And that's the only difference, okay? Make sense? And it, it gives it kind of a different feeling, okay? It's a, a neoclassical feeling if you ever listen to Ingo Mamsin, but also a Spanish feeling if you listen to flamenco. It's used in many different ways. The way it was originally thought, though, it was a scale used to make chords, okay? And so we changed this note here respect to the natural minor to make those chords more interesting. What happened in the natural minor scale is that my first chord is A minor, okay? The chord will be again A minor, which is made by the notes A, C, and E. And my fifth chord, in classical music, the first chord and the fifth chord are the most important in the grand scheme of composition. The fifth chord here would be an E minor chord, E, G, B. And uh, what happens in classical music is that you often move between the first chord and the fifth chord. And this movement felt a little bit weak by the composer of the time. So you had A minor, A minor, E minor which is a cool, it's cool, okay, not, not a problem, cool movement, but it felt a little bit weak. What they did, they modified the scale so that the first chord was still A minor, A, C, E, but the fifth chord could be E, E, G sharp, B, or even E7, E, G sharp, B, D. Again, that, you, you find all these in music theory book so far, okay? But this sounds a bit stronger. Respect to before. The natural is the harmonic is and again I can use E7 rather than just E major and you've heard this chord progression over and over and over again okay so far so good we changed the scale to create more interesting chords really nothing special okay we do this all the time what happened though is that if you do this these scales start to sound interesting for chords, but not, at least again, to the ear of the time, it starts to sound strange when you think about melodies, okay? So they created the melodic minor scale. Melodic minor, M-E-L, okay? And what they did, the problem of this scale, the harmonic minor, again, for the ear of the time, was that the distance between these F and G was, uh, G sharp, was too big. It, it's was hard to sing. And yet, indeed, if you try to sing this scale, when you get here, it's hard to sing this interval correctly in tune because they, they are too distant as notes. They don't, it doesn't feel like a step anymore, okay? To avoid this difficulty, to make life easier, and remember, the choir at the time, and, and today too, 
they sang the different section of the choir sang different notes. So if I don't know that the tenor voice gets this kind of jump here, it's hard to get it when everybody else has the easy voice. Essentially, it's easy to get confused. So what they did, they say, let's create the melodic minor where we keep the G sharp. Okay. We keep as much as we can, but we make this F and F sharp. So now this is two frets or a full step, and this is two frets, so a full step, not the three half steps you have here, okay? So that this scale, it's easier to sing, and honestly, it sounds pretty good too, okay? Again, so far, you find this in Music Theory Book. This scale, again, a melodic minor, sounds this way. And again, you have A, B, C, D, D, F sharp, G sharp, A. But I'm already doing something controversial here, because if you look in music theory books, what happens is that when you play this scale going up, you play what I just wrote. But music theory book insists that when you play this scale going down, you instead play the natural minor scale. To be formally correct, I should go this scale going up, the melodic, and going down, the natural. Which is a cool sound, okay? But it's a bit confusing why the scale changes, okay? And it's not the way we it's not something we could call scale today, okay? Today a scale is just a set of notes. So we don't really they're not really used to change it. I mean, if I talk about the Lydian scale, it's a definite set of notes. If I talk about the Mixolydian scale, it's a definite set of notes. While these scales seem to change depending on the direction you go. Nothing strange, but if we stop here, like most music theory books do. Then something strange happened because you see, for instance, Bach or Vivaldi use this scale here, the melodic minor, going down without coming back to the natural. They use those notes going down. And if you if that's the whole theory you have, then you have a missing piece. Because in, in no in no place here you can go down and use those notes. It seems like a small thing, but people have fought battles over that. And uh, Myself, I made a video some time ago saying that you can totally use the, the melodic minor going down and keeping the G sharp and F sharp, and boy, you could not imagine the hate email, okay? That's what we have so far, but when this question came in, okay, the person making the question mentioned a Bach scale, a Bachian scale, okay? And uh, I think it's a Spanish picker, and it was called the, 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 the Scala Bachiana, okay? So I, may, I did my research, and apparently there is another in South America, and apparently also in some European conservatories. Apparently, it happens also in Italy. I didn't, I didn't know that. In some conservatory, they teach you that there is a fourth scale, okay, a fourth minor scale, and they call this the Bach scale, which is exactly the right name for it, by the way. <laughs> it's exactly the name I would have given it if I could. The Bach scale. It's exactly like the melodic minor. Okay? The difference between those two is that when you use the melodic, you have those notes going up and you have those other notes going down. Okay? So in the melodic minor scale, you change it perfectly if you go up or down. In the Bach scale, it's a scale like we normally understand, and it's the same scale going up and going down. And these explain what Bach was doing, okay? So, again, it's just a question of names and definition, <clears throat> but the thing is, if you want to change the notes, you call it melodic minor. If you want to, keep, don't, to not change the same, no, no, the same uh, the notes and keep the same notes, you use the Bach scale. The, inter interestingly enough, this is also what we would call the jazz minor scale. Some people call this in jazz colleges, at least some jazz colleges, they call this scale the jazz minor scale. Okay? Meaning that it's like the melodic, but we're not doing all this nonsense of changing the notes. Which, I mean, I say it's nonsense, but in reality, there is a base on this, okay? There is an interesting... Um, there is a reason why we are changing this, okay? The reason has nothing to do with scales, per se. The reason is that 
originally people were not really even thinking about those notes as scales. They were thinking about these as just uh, ways to to build music, but not set of notes. And the idea that there are some exercises in counterpoint, when whenever you move up from the fifth note of the scale, E, to the first note of the scale, so from E to A going up, then you would use those notes here, so you find a half step at the end, okay? Because you have a full step, full step, half step here before the A. And whenever you move down from A, the first note of the scale, to E, the fifth, you move those notes down here, so the half step is at the end between F and E. Because by the aesthetic of the music of the time, that sounded cool. To put the half step at the end of the melodic statement, at the end of your melody, that was sounded cool to them. Okay, so again, maybe this is a scale, maybe this is a procedure, maybe this is something else, but that's the idea. Now, the thing that again surprised me is this, that in most Anglo-Saxon or English-speaking <laughs> um, universities or colleges, as far as I know, but at least in all the books of theory I found in those languages, they explain you only those three. And so when you see Bach or Vivaldi going down with those notes, you are left with a big, like, what the heck are they doing, <laughs> okay? But again, in South America, in Italy, in some other colleges or universities in Italy, they teach you about this Bach scale. I think this is the best way of naming all those scales, actually. I think that's genius, because it actually, we can finally distinguish between if you change the notes or if you don't change the notes. So, natural, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Harmonic, made invented to create chords, that's why harmonic, A, B, C, D, E, F, sharp, G. Melodic, invented to create melodies, A, B, C, D, E, F, sharp, G, sharp, going up, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, coming down, Bach scale or jazz minor, A, B, C, D, E, F, sharp, G, sharp, both going up and going down. And in this way, finally, we have some clear naming of all these messy situations. Now, all those scales sound cool, okay? And all those scales can sound ancient or modern, depending on how you're using them, okay? Now, again, this is called the Bach scale and also the jazz minor scale. And so the very old music and the very new music. Make sense? I hope all these clarify all this problem of the minor scale. I hope you can find some use for those scales. You just play them on your guitar, hear how they sound. We can do more videos about how to use all those, okay? If, you're, if you like this idea of studying scales, I go way more in depth on my course Master of the Mods, where I, we do the, the scales and modes of and, and all, the, all the modes of all the scales too, essentially. So we, do, we go in depth on scales and modes, how to play them on your guitar, how to make them sound good in improvisation, and how to use the modes of the scale to create ultra-modern uh, music, okay? Very good, if you like this video smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions on these or anything else about music theory, write it down in the comments. I love reading your comments and making videos on these. This is Tomas Azzilia of MissTheoryForGuitar.com, and until next time, enjoy. <laughs>